Hi, I'm Gregory Paulini, and on this episode of Table Saw Techniques, I'm going to show you an easy way to cut dados and grooves on your saw stop table saw. So stick around. Dados and grooves are incredibly useful joints. I use them when I need to install a bottom in a drawer or make some dividers in a cabinet. I use them for cabinet construction and for shelving. There's a lot of applications where you'll use a dado or a groove. So what's the difference between a dado and a groove? Well, they're pretty much the same exact joint. The real difference is semantics. It's whether the joint runs with the grain of the wood or across the grain of the wood. A groove always runs with the grain, and a dado always runs across. Whether you're cutting a dado or a groove, both joints are non-through joints, which means the blade won't come all the way through the wood. So we need to remove the blade guard from the saw stop and install the riving knife. And the first joint that I'm going to cut is going to be a groove, which goes with the grain. So it's technically a rip cut. So I'm going to use a ripping blade installed in the saw stop. To cut this groove, I'm going to center it on the edge of this board. And this is a pretty typical application for me. It's something I use on cabinet doors all the time. This could either be a rail or a style in a cabinet door, and I have to cut a groove in it to receive the panel. While setting up for my groove, there's two critical components. I need to have my depth of cut proper. In this case, I'm going to cut one half inch. The second critical thing is the distance from the fence. And for this, I'm going to set my fence to one quarter inch. And I'll cut this groove in two passes, flipping the workpiece after each pass to ensure that my groove is centered. And I don't want this board to wobble while I'm cutting it. So, for stability, I'm going to use a couple feather boards to keep it in place. Now I'm almost ready to cut. There's one last thing I have to do before I fire up my saw stop. I want to make sure that I've got on eye protection. And it's going to be a little loud, so hearing protection. So I'm going to feed the board through and keep some downward pressure on it. I don't want the board to lift up. Once the board is completely on the deck of the saw stop, then I'm going to use a push stick. Now I safely reach for the board and flip it end for end. And I'll take a second pass. I never want my hand going directly over the blade. All right, my blade stopped. Reach over here, and there's my groove. Perfectly centered and ready to receive a panel. So now let me show you another grooving application, this time for a drawer bottom. This is a pretty typical dovetail drawer and you can see I've got a groove here running with the grain to accept the drawer bottom. Now this drawer is going to have a half inch plywood bottom so I need to cut a groove that's one half inch and I could do this with multiple passes or an easier way is to put in a dado blade. So let me show you how to install a dado blade in the saw stop so that we can cut this groove in one pass. To safely install a dado blade in your saw stop table saw, you'll need three things. First, a dado blade. You'll also need the dado blade brake cartridge. And finally, you need an insert that's made for the dado blade. To start, I'm going to turn off the power to my saw stop. I'll start with removing the standard insert and setting that aside for now. 
Now I'll remove the riving knife. We won't use that for this operation. And finally I remove my blade. I'm about to dispel a pretty popular myth out there. There's a lot of folks that think it's a real chore to install a dado blade into a saw stop. And a lot of it revolves around the brake. Well, removing the standard brake and swapping it for a dado blade brake is pretty simple and straightforward. So I'm going to set aside my brake for safekeeping. And now I just need to install the dado. The number of cutters that you'll need is going to depend on your particular dado blade. If you're using an adjustable dado stack, there may be some trial and error. Note that SawStop recommends only using 8 inch stack dado sets with a maximum thickness of 13 16 of an inch. Wobble dado sets are not recommended, as they may not engage correctly with the dado brake cartridge. Also, do not use molding heads or sets with solid plate interior chippers, as neither brake cartridge is designed to stop those dado types. And here's a little tip. When using a stack dado, make sure that the carbide isn't pressing up against another piece of carbide. The teeth are actually wider than the blade, and you'll end up breaking the teeth, cracking them as you tighten down your blade. So now I'm just snugging up the blade. And I insert my dado plate. And the last step is to turn on the saw stop and let it go through its initialization process. The steady green light without any red light tells me I'm good to go. So now I set my height and I set my fence. So here's another little tip that can really help. You notice I set my fence with a handheld scale now rather than the fence scale. Well, as soon as we put the dado blade in, it changed the width of our blade, meaning our scale on our fence is no longer accurate. I always want to make sure I set the scale or I set the fence using a handheld scale when I'm using the dado blade. All right, so I'm going to want to make sure that I've got good downward pressure on my workpiece as I push it across the dado blade. And in order to do that, I'm going to use these push blocks. They give me some downward pressure, but they keep my hand off of the workpiece and away from the blade. These push blocks not only ensure quality, but they also keep my hands out of harm's way. And there's the groove for my drawer bottom, cut in one pass. So that's two grooving applications. Now let me show you one of the most common dado applications. Let's assume we're building a cabinet. And we have an upright, and then we need to install a floor or roof to that cabinet. And a real strong way to do that is by cutting a dado and inserting the floor of the cabinet into the cabinet side. So we're going to use the same dado blade setup, but we're not going to use our fence. Instead, we'll use the miter gauge to guide our piece. Now, for this setup, I want to make sure that my dado blade is the same width as the part that I'm going to dado into my cabinet side. So I've got some smaller parts here, but they represent a cabinet side and a cabinet floor. So it's important that this dado 
is the same width as the floor that's going to be inserted into it. So I would position my workpiece to where I need to make the cut. And then for consistency, I could clamp a stop block to my fence. Now I can make that same position cut all day long without it ever changing. Notice I'm not using the fence in conjunction with the miter gauge. That could cause a binding situation and present dangerous kickback. And again, safety glasses and hearing protection. When it comes to dados, it doesn't get any better than that. And that's how simple it is to cut grooves and dados on your saw stop table saw. Be sure to join me again for another episode of Table Saw Techniques.